that PWC uh, uh, Preference of Economic Crimes Survey ranks Kenya third in corruption in the world. It is indeed sad that Kenya ranks top of the world in, case, in, in areas such as embezzlement, bribery, and procurement fraud. The survey I've just mentioned uh, reports ranks embezzlement as the most dominant economic crime in the country. Many other integrity surveys over similar indictments on the country are facts that we should all be ashamed of. Leaders and the entire citizenry have a civic and ethical responsibility to fight graft. Institutions have a democratic and institutional duty to punish and eliminate this vice. Ladies and gentlemen, as an institution, the judiciary is under obligation to administer the law without fear or favor. In this regard, the judiciary is an institution where those who engage in corruption should face justice according to the law. I want to state here and now that the judiciary will not be a shelter or a sanctuary for the corrupt. However, this must not be misunderstood. I must state that, take into consideration that the constitutional rights of an accused person for a fair trial under Article 50 of the Constitution will be scrupulously adhered to in the prosecution and the hearing of those cases. My message to the other stakeholders the judiciary is not the only player in the administration of justice. In fact, it comes at the tail end of the chain. Unless we cooperate, we are not going to succeed in fighting corruption. My message to the other actors in the justice chain is this. <coughs> Give us evidence and we shall convict. If you fail to furnish us with the evidence required to prove the cases beyond reasonable doubt, we shall acquit. This is not a failure. When such acquittals are recorded, it's not a failure of the court system, but a miscarriage of the investigation and the prosecutor, uh, prosecutorial machinery. I understand the ever-increasing public quest for rabid and speedy con convictions of who have literally robbed this country of hundreds of, of, of millions of shillings. We must, however, always remember that the judiciary is constitutionally required to uphold the rule of law and to ensure that due process is followed uh, in court proceedings. This is more so because our laws require that criminal charges be proved beyond reasonable doubt before any convictions are recorded. That's why I reiterated the fact that the, we are going to um, follow scrupulously the rights of a fair hearing in our courts. In discharging this duty, the desire uh, for expedition has to be balanced with the right of an accused person to a fair trial and a fair administration act administrative act. A court of law cannot condemn without a hearing, nor can it convict without evidence. Cases of corruption have been dragging in our, in our courts for years on end. The public should be forgiven for believing that the rich and the powerful in this country are and will never be convicted. When arraigned before court, they quickly obtain injunctions or stay orders, continually adjourn the hearings of their cases, and thus wear out the witnesses and end up with acquittals. Because of other cases, the trial courts before which the anti-corruption and the economic crimes cases are taken 
and the High Court before which applications for judicial review and constitutional references challenging the prosecution of those crimes are filed, we are not able to expeditiously hear and determine these matters. It is to address these concerns of delay and the public perception that the rich and the powerful are never made to answer for their crimes, that the anti-corruption and economic crimes division of the High Court was established and we first uh, gazetted the, the rules um, in December last year. The judges in this division have no other business but to expeditiously hear and determine such applications and constitutional references. Those directions have now been superseded by the practice directions we are launching here today. This is done in order to keep uh, pace with the, I mean, the changing trends and adopt the best practices in our criminal justice system. It is also for this reason that I'm shortly going to designate uh, more magistrates to hear and determine uh, these cases. The government of the practice directions that we are launching here today is that the judicial review application and the constitutional references in respect of corruption and uh, economic crimes shall henceforth be filed, heard, and determined by the, I mean, in the anti-corruption division of the High Court in Nairobi. No other court, no other High Court division or station shall entertain those matters. The division will, will also handle or criminal review uh, applications, appeals, and other applications arising from the divisions of the special magistrates appointed under Section 3 of the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Act. What I'm saying here is that the applications challenging the prosecution of the corruption cases, that is judicial review applications, and the constitutional uh, references brought in those in respect of those cases are the ones that will come to Nairobi and be heard by this division. We have very good reason why we are doing that. As I said earlier, the other, co I mean, the other courts have a lot of other cases to, to deal with. If we allow those applications to continue being heard in the other high court divisions, and I mean uh, high court divisions, and the stations, they will queue with the rest of the other cases. And the, the establishment of this uh, uh, division will, will be futile, will be futile. So those are the, the applications which are going to come here for hearing and determination. Once they are determined, if the prosecution is, 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 is stopped, of course the matter will, will, will terminate. The, high, the, the, the magistrates' courts will uh, be moved to terminate those proceedings and the, the, the matter will end. But if they are dismissed, the accused persons involved in those cases will go back to the, to the courts, to the trial courts, and have their cases heard and determined. So let, uh, let, let, let me not be misunderstood as saying that we are bringing all economic crimes uh, cases to Nairobi. It is only the applications which are chal challenging the judicial, I mean, the, 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 the prosecution of those cases that are going to be had in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the, the division in Nairobi. I know they are going to be, uh, some of those people are going to protest, uh, but we have taken this as a bold step. It is always said that extraordinary circumstances call for extraordinary measures. And given the level of corruption in our country, we have no choice but to take extraordinary measures to deal with this vice. So that's why we are making, those, uh, those, uh, making these directions. The other matters, ladies and gentlemen, the fight against corruption is a collaborative effort by all the agencies involved. 
the ESCC CEO is here with his members. I'm happy to see you here, Mr. Mubea. The Attorney General is here. He has, he's giving us full support. The DPP is here. He's giving us full support. We want all the agencies to be involved in what we are doing so that we can deal with this uh, vice. There has been a blame game. There has been a blame game in the country. The, 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 the prosecution, at times, the police come and say, look, we presented the cases to court. The courts acquitted the people, or they left them. They dismissed the cases. We are not going to take the blame where it, it does not belong to us. What we are saying, Mr. A.G., what we are saying, Mr. DPP and the ES, ESC uh, director, is that the courts from today, the instructions or the, 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 the agreement we have all reached, is that where we are going to see short investigations, we will tell the public that we are unable to convict here because of short investigations. Where we are going to see delays in the prosecution of these cases, we are going to tell the public that we are not able to proceed with these cases as expeditiously as we should because our hands are tied, the DPP is not proceeding with the, the prosecutions as speedily as is required. We are aware, Mr. DPP, of the challenges that you face. Some of the cases we are handling uh, involve huge documents. Some require the opinions of uh, the, 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 what, the handwriting experts. And we know the challenges that come with that. And the courts have been very accommodative on that. But we are not going to accommodate you forever. Something has to be done with those uh, experts so that they are availed for us to proceed with those cases and hear and determine them as soon as, 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 as we are required to. The other challenge that we have is from the, the defense team. Mr. President uh, of the LS LSK, we thank you for being here today. We have numerous applications coming to our courts for adjournment. You will agree with me, ladies and gentlemen, that hardly do you see um, a senior government of issue being charged in court than you see him in a hospital the following day. Thereafter, it is a circus. He is sick, we are doing this, we are doing that, we are doing that. Applications are being brought uh, now and again to adjourn cases because um, somebody is allegedly sick. We know that these are tactics to delay the hearing. We are not saying that they don't fall sick. Occasionally they do. Eh? But in most cases, there are tactics intended to delay the prosecution of these cases. What we have agreed as the judiciary is that we are going to be extremely firm. Mr. President, please inform your, your members that it is not going to be usual, I mean, business as usual. We are not going to grant adjournments unless they are deserved. They are genuinely deserved. If counsel is going to take some of these cases, let him be sure that he has time for it. We are not going to allow adjournments because counsel is in another court. If he knew he's in another court, he should not take it. Eh? So we, we are not going to be held. The public, we are not going, as I said, we are not going to take the blame for anybody anymore. So, ladies and gentlemen, what we are saying in short is that we want to deal with these cases because we have a duty to feed to the public to deal with these cases and have them 
uh, disposed of expeditiously. So the practice directions that we have given, the magistrates who have been assigned those cases have been allowed off from hearing any other cases as long as they have cases of anti-corruption and economic crimes uh, 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 from, from that, from that uh, division. So they will concentrate on these cases and hear them on a day-to-day -day basis. The applications which are going to be filed for judicial review and uh, constitutional reference, if you file the application today, be ready to deal with it the following day or as soon as the other side is served and has filed a reply. So that, as uh, the, the, the principal judge said, these matters are going to be disposed, those applications will be disposed of within a month and we are able to go on with the, the, the what? The hearing of these cases and, uh, and uh, dispose of them. As just, uh, I believe it was just uh, 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 Mongo stated, from last year and, uh, and uh, the, 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 the rest of the part of this year, because we have been firm, we have had Mr. Wako, we have had 18 convictions recorded in these kind of cases. We, we want, that, that's, a, that's a very small number given the number of cases that we have, but we are making prog progress and we want to proceed and have uh, these cases heard and determined as soon as possible. In short, what I'm saying is the agencies that are involved in the justice system let us stop the blame game. Let us stop the blame game. Let each one of us play his or uh, her role and have these cases heard and determined as soon as possible. This reminds me of uh, a quote from Anne Bishop in The Hair of Shadows, where, where, where it is stated, when honor and the law no longer stand, on the same side of the line, then the mind drifts to evil and corruption. Let us stand on the same side. Let us deal with these cases with the expedition that they require. The Kenyans are demanding action on these cases. And I'm calling upon all the, 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 the stakeholders in the just system to collaborate with us so that we can have these cases heard and determined. Those who need to be acquitted, be acquitted and be set free. They also require to, be, I mean, to, to know that they are innocent. Those who are found guilty, be convicted and punished according to law. That's all we are saying. And in a nutshell, we are saying it is not business, it is not going to be business as usual from today with regard to these cases we want to go on. With those few remarks, ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure and duty to officially launch the Anti-Corruption and Economic uh, Crimes Division of the High Court and the practice notes that are going to, the, to, to, to ID. Thank you very much.